so thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you today. My aim in the next eight minutes is to share the methodological process through which we developed a well-being framework that will inform the development of the project's data collection tools, starting with the survey. I'm going to present the process we went through as a series of three challenges. So the first challenge is translating conceptual understanding, understandings of well-being into indicators for measurement. The second challenge is drawing on the well-being measurements to identify those that can inform refugee well-being specifically. And the third was developing domains and indicators that can inform um, the research project realigning responses to protracted displacement in an urban world. So to begin with the first challenge, which is translating conceptual understandings of, of well-being into indicators. In the existing literature, um, Leon Diete and Medina Lara conducted a broad study that reviewed 2,000 well-being studies, and this led them to identify 196 domains and within them 99 indicators. They concluded from this exercise that there is little consistent agreement in the existing literature on how well-being should be measured, how instruments should be designed, and which dimensions should be included. This might lead one to narrow down and standardize indicators, but Sarah White has argued that this does not call for standardization of well-being indicators, but rather recognition of how concepts of well-being are specific to spaces and places and generated through them. So with these facts and insights in mind, the first, cha the first challenge the IIED team set itself was to develop indicators that, on the one hand, capture the breadth of, of well-being while generating insight into how well-being priorities differ across our four research sites. So the second challenge was to go from discussing well-being measurements in general to understanding refugee well-being more specifically. This was a challenge because there has been very little work on well-being and forced displacement. As I will show you in a few slides, there are several interesting single studies, but not a cohesive body of work or a framework for well-being in situations of displacement as yet. So in order to come up with refugee well-being measurements, we looked at three sets of indices. Well-being indices by national governments, well-being frameworks that are used in international development research, and well-being studies in forced displacement. I will quickly go through what we learned from each and what they offered our own well-being framework. So national government indices usually combine pre-existing data on domains like life expectancy, economic growth, and environmental and climate measurement with cross-sectional surveys of residents. These often combine objective and subjective measures that seek to understand residents' experiences and perceptions of services, so their civic and social engagement, and their feelings of personal satisfaction. Some national governments have also developed indicators to examine specific aspects of well-being, such as mental health, or well-being in the aftermath of disasters. One example is the National Comorbidity Survey developed by the US government's National Center for Health Statistics with the University of Harvard in the aftermath of um, Hurricane Katrina. When it comes to well-being in development, several frameworks exist, and they were all very helpful and useful for our thinking. The Bath Wellbeing and Development Framework emphasizes the interrelatedness of the material, the relational, and the subjective. By looking at the three components together, the framework argues that well-being does not belong just to individuals, but is produced in interaction with others as well as in specific contexts. Gupta et al.'s well-being survey provides insights into how to measure subjective well-being in relation to its other components. Their survey used focus groups to identify the well-being priorities of local populations. In the survey that followed the focus groups, they asked participants to identify the importance of these well-being domains to them and their satisfaction with these well-being domains in their lives. The capability approach calls attention to the conditions in which people aspire to well-being. It looks at the importance of enabling or disabling environments in supporting well-beings, that is, the dynamic relationship between options, abilities, and opportunities. And finally, Although not a well-being index per se, we found the refugee integration scale very helpful for measuring the relational aspects of well-being, such as social bonds and bridges, personal and community trust, and rights and citizenship. And finally, as mentioned earlier, while there is no specific framework for measuring well-being in contexts of displacement, there are a wide range of very informative single studies that we also consulted 
These range from Lintello et al's work on well-being amongst refugees in Lebanon and Jordan. So they applied the Bath Wellbeing and Development Framework to three domains, documentation, housing, and economic participation. Um, other indexes, um, other uh, studies went on to support indexes like the Self-Reliance Index, which was informed by the Refugee Wellbeing and Adjustment Index. In some cases, well-being was measured in relation to a particular interrelated set of domains. Betz et al. looked at well-being as part of measuring health, food security, leisure and social participation and autonomy. Columbia University's Women Aspire Project and King Hussein Foundation's Information and Resource Center uh, in their projects in Jordan considered well-being in relation to health, mental health, uh, gender-based violence and reproductive health. Handicap International looked particularly at well-being among refugees in relation to disability. Some studies make no mention of well-being at all, but provide data on refugee experiences such as violence, extortion, discrimination, and social and community solidarities that speak to the relational and context-specific aspects of well-being. So after consulting such a broad range of frameworks and studies, the third challenge was bringing this learning together. So this is what we end up, ended up with. Four main domains, bodily well-being, economic well-being, social well-being, and political well-being, and within them, a wide range of indicators. So just to go through them very quickly, bodily well-being covering things such as physical and mental health, access to affordable housing and health services, clean water and sanitation, food and nutrition, sexual and gender-based violence and trauma. Economic well-being, including right to work, availability of work, education, recognition of educational degrees, access to education and training, working within fields of expertise, exploitation in the labor market, debt and dependency ratio. Social well-being, including social support, spiritual support, connectivity with family and friends, volunteering, leisure time, access to green space and access to culture, and political well-being, covering safety and security, access to justice, legal status, perceptions of stigma and discrimination, diversity, access to information, civic engagement and participation, and access to media representation. So this was both an exercise in collation across fra frameworks and individual studies, and parallel, parallel to it was an exercise in differentiation that aimed to develop a framework that was specific to contexts of displacement and that recognizes well-being as enabled by its environment, re relational and produced by social networks, and importantly, subjectives, to account for how priorities and satisfaction are defined by refugees themselves. So what next? Having developed the framework, we used it to develop indicators for the survey being carried out by our partner, Samuel Hall. The project will be testing out this framework through several stages before we begin data collection. This will include survey panels in each country by being run by Samuel Hall, concept testing focus groups where we seek to understand participants' own definitions of well-being, livelihoods, and self-reliance, and then the piloting of the survey. Based on responses we receive at this listening stage, we will be returning to the well-being framework in the previous slide and refining it. After that, we will then begin the data collection for the project. That's it from us. Thank you so much for your time and we look forward to your feedback. Thank you.